Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. Uh, now we have uh, all the big fangs out of the way with Apple reporting last night, so we don't have to worry about uh, you know any big surprises in either direction. Let the market do its own thing from here. Uh, Fed meetings out of the way today. Uh, interesting day. The usual knee-jerk reactions. I talk about that all the time. Don't take, don't read too much into the initial, uh, you know, knee-jerk reaction. When we look at the intraday charts, uh, you can see big, big rip up. Uh, here it is after the FOMC announcement. And a big fade. That's the spy. But let's just focus on tech, because again, that's that's all that really. QQQ and tech is all that really uh, concerns me at this point as far as the broad market goes because it's been it's what's been holding up and lifting the market. All right, uh, so we have uh, yesterday we had the breakdowns as I said. I didn't mean too much because it was right in front of Apple's earnings. Apple had lifted the market, but. Uh, we still closed down uh, red today after a nice dump, and uh, the equal weighted QQQ index was down closer to 1%. So this was all Apple. Apple, of course, you know, up today and uh, single-handedly keeping QQQ into, into green territory most of the day. Again, not by the close, whereas the equal weighted NASDAQ 100, you can pull that up on NDXE or QQQE. Uh, QQQE is a thinly traded ETF. There it is. Big bearish engulfing down about, uh, you know, almost 1% there. So uh, what did I want to show you? It's a lot of more of the same, but... I said this earlier, I did a video for members this morning, and that covered the broad markets as well as a lot of other things we're looking at right now, oil, treasury bonds, although I may have admitted those, but I've been covering those lately. Um, what else? A couple sectors that stood out as well. And what I said is, you know, you have to, although you can't really, you couldn't jump on that, that uh, breakdown yesterday, or at least put too much stock into it because it happened right before Apple reported. It is a breakdown and we did close. You had a red close there is what I said. And of course we back tested today. In fact it was a perfect back test uh, on the on the 60 minute charts here. Let me pull that up for you guys. Uh, here's the futures. And uh, you know I said this in the trading room a couple times today. I started you know I posted this chart. I think I even covered it in the video yesterday. Posted it this morning. Here's the uptrend line off the lows on the 24th. Super well defined. We got a little whippy here coming into earnings uh, with a lot of the big uh, FANG stocks reporting over the last week or so. But again, Apple's out of the way. So let me zoom back in here on this chart. Uh, okay, here we go. This is actually, uh, I should clarify, these are 120 minute candles, not 60 minute candles. I'm using a six month, two hour chart. Let me just pull it back in a little closer here and take a look at the recent action. So. Uh, here's what happened. Google knocked us down. Uh, Alphabet, uh, after their earnings, took, uh, caused the breakdown, an impulsive break, and then we moved clearly below the trend line. And then Apple, after the bell yesterday, and uh, that was really, yeah, since right after 4.30 p.m. they reported, popped us right up there. And at the time, I made mention, that's an objective shorting up. And we've had uh, almost 24 hours of trading since then. So from last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, after the closing bell, and all morning and even into today, we had multiple shorting ops. And I you know, continue to post this in the trading room several times. It's just had a lot of objective short entries here on the back test. And again, is it guaranteed that they'll, it will play out? So far, it's played out for a nice pullback. No, but... I maintain what I've been saying that the risk reward has become increasingly attractive. Before, you know, for a few weeks back, I was saying it's just not favorable to short or to be long. But with the way the charts are postured right now, positioned right now, uh, the you know the risk reward for a short on the queues is very attractive. And I look at it this way. Uh, you short here because we're starting, we're seeing a lot of things breaking down. The S&P is already broken down. Every other index except, uh, and now including QQQ, everything except the tech sector is broken down. And that's actually, I'll pull that chart in a second here. Um, so the point being, you you know, you take a, a short with a 2% stop loss. Uh, that's exactly what we, you know, in the last time we shorted QQQ, it's been weeks or even months now, uh, stopped out for a 2% loss somewhere in here. I don't even know where it was. Um, but again, so a 2% stop loss with a minimum of several times that, at least a 6% downside uh, from the back test of the wedge to this uh, target down here. This is about a, actually 7, now about 7.5% down to that 72, 75 target. 
Uh, we do have some targets I gave on uh, members for QQQ, and that, that may become an official trade tomorrow. Uh, but again, I've already shared those price targets, so if you like the trade, that's the way I look at it. You have a an attractive RR, better than 3 to 1, again, assuming a, a tight stop, because from what's happened recently, the market doesn't have a lot of business being up much more than 2%. If you can do it on a daily close, even better, maybe a 60-minute candle close because sometimes I'll, you'll run things up and pop the stops before the big move comes. And um, so, again, a, a, about a, at least a triple uh, profit potential compared to your stop, again, running about a 2% stop, but as much as a magnitude of order higher than that. In other words, at least 25% or so if, uh, as I've talked about, um, and I know I'm, I imagine most people have given up on the whole retesting the lows. But as I said, I don't think we'll retest the lows. I think if we get anywhere close to them, we'll smash right down through them. So, yes, is the are the is the probability or odds of that happening right now at this point in time uh, fairly low? It is, but it is it's certainly decent. Um, and again, it's all about quantifying risk and reward. It's you know it's like I talk about. You go to the you know, if you go to the races and, and you bet on a long shot, uh, you have, you know, much higher odds than betting on the sure thing. So betting on the sure thing is, uh, you know, betting on a continued, you know, resumption of the uptrend. Maybe that works. I'm seeing sell signals here. But uh, to risk 2% to make 25% uh, or more, uh, that to me is a, uh, it, it's, it's very attractive. Uh, even if the probability of success on that trade is not very high if that makes sense to you so that kind of counters it counters out the the um you know anytime I, I i analyze a trade i look at not only the risk reward ratio but also the probability of it playing out and typically the trades with the lower rrs for example if you just want a short qqq uh for a pullback trade uh then you go for example here's a couple of levels these aren't the official targets that I've uh, provided to members. That's on that 60-minute chart I posted. And I might move these lines around. The charts are dynamic. These are just rough levels that I'm looking at here. So, you know, pullback trade, like I said, if you're bullish, uh, nothing to be too excited about today. We just saw an intraday reversal. Um, if you're bullish, you can pull, you know, look for pullbacks to any or, or, or both of these targets here. And I think, what did I say from today's highs? Let's see if that aligns with the other target I had. Yeah, it does. A little over 7%. Uh, so let's just say, uh, keep this simple because I'm probably confusing the heck out of everybody here. This would be my correction zone. This would be my bullish scenario, if you will, right now, uh, if that makes any sense to you on the market, that we correct to one or both of these levels here, and then the market blasts off to new highs. That's my bullish scenario. It is not my preferred scenario, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take the charts as they come and see how things play out. My bearish scenario would have us, you know, still going down to take out the lows, and I color-coded the, the levels here. This is, um, right now, let's just say if we are going to new highs in 2019 if this market is going to take out these highs and, and go much beyond. This would be my maximum pullback target for a swing target here, about 166.50 or so. I've had this level here for a while. And then these are my color-coded, you know, warning warning levels here. Uh, yellow means not so good for the market if it breaks, uh, below, much below 160, 160.10. Orange is even, uh, you know, a higher level of caution if that breaks. And red is where I think the floodgates open. And that's where I think, uh, you know, I probably differ from most people. And again, it's way down there. Let's let's see if we even get this first because the way the market's been going, uh, we can't even, we haven't even had a 7% pullback yet. So first things first, and we'll just see how it goes from there. Um, but just keep in mind, uh, that's what I'll be looking at if and when we get there and um you know if, if if this level goes i think it'll just you know waterfall down on through this low where i'm sure a lot of people will probably be stepping in to buy a retest of that low if we get there <coughs> okay let's talk tech 
Uh, like I say, tech is the market. Tech is what's lifted this market. Tech is the you know heaviest component of the S and P 500, by far even a much larger component of the Nasdaq 100. Uh, so like I say, until tech breaks, the market's not going to break. And here we are, uh, it's starting to crack. Uh, this isn't a solid sell signal. You know, I often talk about an impulsive break and or a solid daily close below a trend line. We did. We certainly closed below it today. In fact, we closed below it or right on it yesterday. Um, and we popped back above it intraday, but failed to hold, put in a pretty, pretty uh, impulsive red candle. In fact, we may have, yeah, we probably now engulfed one, two, three, four, these previous five candles, six, uh, five candles at least. A bearish engulfing, you just have to have the body of the current candle engulf the body of the previous. It doesn't matter about the wicks and candles, uh, the wicks and tails. So there it is. So there's a bearish engulfing candle uh, stick, and that's a pretty pretty ominous thing when it comes after especially after a very extended uptrend uh, and run there so uh, we might have missed that one but close enough so you can see we've we've wiped out about the last uh, week or so trading in XLK today but but not by a lot there we need to take out those candles with conviction so here's what I say when you have a bearish engulfing is it a sell signal itself no because sometimes they'll come during an uptrend and uh, and then you have a green candle the next day and the uptrend resumes. So what I like to look for is confirmation via an additional red candles. And I, like I like to say, it's a little bit of slang, but the redder the better. Uh, nothing would be better than a gap down, obviously, tomorrow and then to you know, stay below that candle. But uh, again, it's what I'm looking for in the, in the coming days and those red candles would also take us clearly below that trend line in XLK. Uh, just as it gave us a major sell signal on the market back here in uh, October, right off the highs uh, back then, as was highlighted at the time, and that you know triggered that big drop there. So that's what I'm looking for, and uh, we'll just do a quick dig into the top components. Something I mentioned in the trading room today. What I have is a, a list of the components of XLK on another monitor here, and I'll go through these in order of market cap. Uh, Microsoft is the biggest one. And remember, Alphabet is no longer a tech stock, at least not in this, it's not in the sector, it's not in XLK. I'm sorry, uh, Alphabet uh, is not. So that's why that's why the tech sector didn't get dragged down when uh, Alphabet got smacked down on earnings uh, the other night. Uh, but what I, what I pointed out, and actually when it was starting to happen, I said Microsoft was dipping its toes into the gap. What I'm referring to is here's Microsoft's earnings induced gap from the other day. And you can see right here, here's our island cluster right here of candle. We still have an island. This isn't an island. It, we didn't gap down, so we don't have that island cluster top yet. But what we do have is a stock, uh, the world's largest company. It just hit the $1 trillion club the other day. Oh, you know, it's been leapfrogging between uh, Amazon and Apple on that uh, exclusive club. But we entered the gap. And in trading, once gaps are entered, they're often backfilled. So that's something to watch right now. Microsoft is still comfortably above its trend line off the lows, one of the better looking stocks. But this is also a bearish engulfing candlestick that's just wiped out every other candle from the gap up. So the previous four candles wiped out today. The bodies have been engulfed by this candle or very close to it. If you want to split it, I'll have to see that can that body might have been a little bit higher. But again, sometimes you take this just kind of the essence of the pattern so for all intents and purposes. That's that's a pretty bearish candle. And whether you want to say it engulfed the body or not, it doesn't matter because it's uh, we closed below the value of these candles. So what does that mean? This is how technical analysis works. It means every single person, institution, computer that bought Microsoft after earnings, uh, after they blew it away, that bought from here to here, they've been wiped out today. I mean, of course, I'm not talking about the people, the you know, HFT, high frequency trading machines that flipped it, you know, anybody that's flipped a trade, but you gotta think of it this way, as far as investors go, if you bought it here, the day they, they beat earnings, um, where would you have taken profits? It never went up below, above that level. So you can see we hit a high that day right here. We never even e eclipsed that high. So it only stands to reason that any investors or institutions that bought the stock any time after they uh, gapped up after earnings, uh, they're underwater now. That's how, and that's really the essence of how technical analysis works. That's what, you know, why we look at things like bearish engulfing candlesticks, uh, island cluster tops, and, uh, you know, breaks of support and resistance for that matter in its most simple form. 
Uh, so there's there's logic to behind why and how technical analysis works. It's not just witchcraft or you know, you know, it's all you know, just randomly drawing trend lines and other things like that. Okay, and just looking at the other, just, again, I'm not going to go through them all, and we'll wrap the video up here, but looking at some of the other top components of XLK, Apple is still uh, in that category, in that uh, ETF. Um, put in a doji candlestick today, big gap up, and they faded a good bit, but not all of. You know, it's still closed up a respectable 5%, and it's above its primary trend line now. As I mentioned in the video I did for subscribers today, if, you know, if Apple holds up here and the market continues up, we may, I may revise this trend line to come in something like this, capture those lows, you know, play around with it a little bit. Uh, we could certainly do that. But as of now, this trend line, I believe, has the best fit, uh, the most number of reactions. We'll leave it like that. And there's something to watch. And we still have support down here at 197.70. So let me say this. Apple has some work to be done to firm up the bearish case, but I can make a, you know, have been making uh, pretty recently, only recently. This one I was long off the lows. Um, wish I would have held it this long, believe you me, but I didn't. Either way, at this point in time, I can make a clearly bearish case. Anywhere in the middle was just, you know, the charts weren't that clear on it. Trend was strong, but you have negative divergence on the RSI, the PPO. You have a fairly well-defined uptrend line, and we almost kissed that 216.41 resistance today. So, uh, you know, here's here's you know how the chart looks. We had a divergent high back there. There was our correction. That's our divergent high, divergent high, divergent high. There, there it is. 13% correction, divergent high, 17% correction. So, uh, you can see at minimum 170, 197.70, uh, possibly down here. That would be my max. Uh, let's say bullish. Uh, pullback target if the markets go into new highs right there that that kind of aligns with that uh, QQQ target I had and then here's my caution zones right there where a yellow mm, breaks not good orange breaks even worse and if the red level breaks just you know probably time to you know see a little waterfall type sell off down that will undercut the uh, lows from 2018. And I could go on and on in here, but actually I'm going to stop because I, I like a lot of these components in XLK. To me, are just beautiful looking short setups right now. So I, uh, and some of these might be official trades. So I'm going to stop with this one. This is the third largest component. Uh, yeah, third largest by market cap. And just try to put it in perspective, Microsoft and Apple are about $1 trillion companies. Those are the two largest I uh, just went over. Visa is the third largest uh, component by market cap in XLK in the tech sector. And it comes in at $329 billion one third of the market cap of those two so it kind of, and then it goes down from there um, pretty quickly too so you know it's not going to have a nearly as big of an impact but I'm just seeing across the board in XLK and this is a point I was you know, wanted to shift over to here lots of bearish uh, you know developments today uh, still a little bit of work to be done for example there's a bearish engulfing in Visa as well um, so if we get any more downside tomorrow, red close, it will A, confirm that bearish engulfing candle as a potential topping stick, and B, take us down below this nice, clean, bearish rising wedge right here and give us a sell signal on Visa, which is the, you know, roughly the third, you know, third or so largest component of the tech sector. Uh, so we'll, we'll end it there. Um, you can see what happened the last time Visa put in a divergent high back here. Uh, had a pretty ne nice correction. And again, I always say this, the divergence is not at all a buy or a sell signal. It's merely an indication of a trend reversal. The sell signals come on breaks of uh, well-defined trend lines or other kind of chart patterns uh, like you had here and uh, like we're waiting for right here. So that's that. Uh, you know, somebody asked me today in the trading room, is it go time? They said, I think so. Uh, so uh, members of the site, I might I have a ever-growing watch list and uh, may put out some trade ideas either in the morning. I'd like to see how the market opens, but um, anything big. And again, uh, especially how it closes tomorrow, uh, we may have some pretty decent sell signals. Um, but we're, like I said, we're very, very close, but not there yet. But I think the charts are so indicative of a correction right now that I still think the risk reward is at least favorable for, if nothing else, a starter position, fractional position, half a position uh, with relatively tight stops. And then you can always add to those positions uh, if you get the uh, confirmation via those additional sell signals, uh, you know, tomorrow or any day in the you know coming week or so here. We'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. 
Hope you enjoyed it.